Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here, and in this video, we're gonna focus on enjoying color in watercolor painting. The watercolor painting process can be very complex and very hard at times. You're, you have to focus on so many different things and elements that sometimes we forget to just have fun. So in this one, I wanna focus purely on using a lot of colors and a lot of water and letting them mix on paper and just creating a beautiful result with a relatively simplified reference in terms of values, light and dark. Okay, so with that being said, let's take it to the table and get started. So regardless of anything, we're gonna have to start with the drawing stage. Now, I did a couple of things here. I uh, was considering not doing this real time, but then I decided I do want to show you the process. So I did add a grid. I'm gonna add the reference photo with the exact dimensions and the grid so you can replicate this. You just have to cut the paper to the same size and do the grid the same uh, size of squares. That's all there is to it. Just to make sure that I get the proportion portions right because drawing um, as I film is a little more challenging so <clears throat> at the very least even though this is a very simple drawing I do want to get it accurate to some degree okay makes sense so we're gonna get started and I see that the top of her head is somewhere around here this line and then it starts from somewhere around here again I'm guesstimating and I can do that because we're using the grid method so the overall proportions will not be lost okay and this is really where you have to put emphasis on shapes. What I'm doing is drawing shapes. I'm not drawing the details. I'm not gonna draw her eye and her eyebrow. I'm just drawing shapes. Here, I'm not drawing a cloth that's uh, over draped over her head. I'm actually just drawing the shape as I see it, okay? So we have a line. A line that separates the white areas from the black areas, you see? Uh, here we have a bit of details to show where the hair is and here we have a few highlights on where her hair comes out of the cloth or whatever that is, okay? Now, the eye starts somewhere around here and goes like that and I'm gonna try and get this entire thing with the, the same kind of proportions, okay? This goes down like that and this goes down like this. Now notice how the entire eye is reduced to just a very simple shape of, and this is very common, you'll see this with dramatic scenes and in different you know, types of media where the eyes are just this <clears throat> black area. Okay, all of this is just a black area. And it's gonna connect completely to this black area. And you can add some texture to the side for the eyebrows, okay? Now this goes down like that, and the nose actually connects with approximately the center of this line. This is why the grid is so helpful. So it goes like this. It eventually connects here, but this shape is a little more complex. So there's a bump here for the bridge of the nose. Then it goes back, then it goes like this. I don't know if we'll get the likeness, to be quite frank. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get this to actually uh, look like her and we don't have much to work from because again it's a very simplified kind of uh, version of the face uh, but hopefully we will get something that is quite similar to the result and remember the goal here is actually to enjoy colors so this is just an extra step I do want to show you because I know it helps a lot of people to see so uh so I decided to do that. That's mostly the, the reason. Now this goes, although I actually made the nose a little too long, but that's fine. Uh, there's a shadow at the bottom of the nose. It goes all the way towards here. It goes down like that, okay? And then this entire area kind of connects. Okay, we have a mid-value shadowy area here that connects to uh, the bottom of the nostril. This bump goes up here to describe the shape of the nostril. Actually, I made a bit of a mess. Let me try and see if I can fix it. This goes up, this goes down to the nostril, this goes back, dips into here. Okay, so that's, we don't need that one moment. I'm gonna get my trusty eraser. There's an extra bump here we're not gonna need. And take your time with it. I see a lot of people that have uh, trouble with the drawing stage simply because they're in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry and even though I'm not in a hurry the result isn't gonna be really all that accurate. So you see you do need to take your time with it. 
and I didn't really work uh, with the, you know, the the correct order. I think I could have just indicated the entire face first. Doesn't really matter. Uh, in any case. Let's get this down here. And also, if you need more information, just add another grid. So make the grid denser. Uh, that can really help if you're uh, if you're unsure of where to place the elements, because then you have an extra lines to really show you where this is, for example. Because here I'm kind of winging it. Okay. Now we have the mouth, and it's somewhere around here. And then it cuts through this line. Now you have to follow the shapes. Once again, don't get confused by what you think is there. <laughs> There's just a bunch of random, sort of random shapes. For example, the upper lip casts a shadow on the lower lip. So you get this kind of a shape. And you see, what's funny is this cuts this shape around the middle, actually. So it's a very um, elongated shape, despite it being looking quite short. You see the tip is close to this line. Um, all of these things, it's just a lot of optical illusions and a lot of things that throw off our judgment, especially when we're talking about the human face. There are so many things that that uh, we tend to paint as we think they are rather than how they truly appear. Um, so you have to watch out for these illusions. Now this entire thing this is an edge that's going to be blended. So I'm just indicating it with some lines here. Same goes for this edge, okay? Uh, this can help to show you exactly where you're going to need to blend some lines, okay? Now, if you want an extra step of help, you just go like this, fill in some of the dark areas so that you know uh, what you're dealing with, okay? Just to help you see things a little clearer. But now I want you to let go of the, you know, the accuracy and this perhaps stifleness of this step, because the next step we're really gonna just paint freely with lots of colors and enjoy it, okay? So I'm gonna prepare my palette and we'll get started. Okay, so we're all set now. Again, I wanna emphasize this stage requires some focus, requires being more accurate. If you wanna get an accurate drawing, obviously you could go through this really fast, but in any case, I want us to now change our state of mind and focus on freedom and fun and lots of water and paint, okay? So let me tell you a story as I mix this paint over here. And I'm gonna use a bit of a phthalo blue kind of color. When I got started in watercolor, I had a huge tendency of over mixing on the palette. What this would end up producing is a result that's very gray, like what you see here on, the, on the, these sides, okay? very, very gray result. And I had no idea what to do to combat this. And the more I did it, the worse it got. So then eventually, what I decided to do is use very extreme pure colors and let them mix on paper. And this was the solution to everything for me. Now I'm actually, if, you're, if you've been really following me, now I'm at the stages of dumbing it down a bit and going a little more, uh, more nuanced with the color because I want to achieve more realistic results. But the first step to getting rid of the over mixing and over stifleness is actually this. Just look at me go and use this color purely, okay, as it is. I'm not mixing it with any other color. I'm just letting it rest on paper as it is, okay? Now, here's another trick for you. A lot of people are nervous, you know, that the paint is gonna dry, everything is gonna dry. Just grab a bunch of water and add it to the paper. And look at this beautiful flow. Look at the movement. When you add enough color and enough water, you'll get this beautiful movement and you will have much more time. I can actually go now drink a glass of water. This will not be lost, okay? At least not completely. Now, as we get to this area, uh, there are some highlights for the hair. So let me leave some of those. Not a lot, just a bit of them, okay? like so, and this area is already back in the shadow. This area indicates a couple of hairs, you see? Now, let's enjoy colors. So let's change our colors a bit. Let's get a bit of uh, burnt sienna. Let's change it up, and I'm using them purely, okay? Now, notice what re what is required to use them purely. I'm digging into the well. Don't be afraid to dig into the well and really bring out the strength of the color. That's another thing I see a lot of people are struggling with. They have a hard time psychologically to bring out the color, okay? To really dig through and to not be afraid. Now, the burnt sienna isn't the most happy color. Let's add a bit of yellow to it. 
I'm gonna reawaken the yellow part of the palette and you can pre-mix all of these. You don't have to do it like I do on the fly. You can uh, pre-mix them, whatever you want, whatever you enjoy really, you can do, okay? Now this area will not dry because it's really wet. You see I'm charging it with some water uh, and paint so it's not gonna dry on us, so I'm not that worried about that. Let me straighten that line, here we go. And we can continue working on this area. So let's put in some pure yellow onto the eye. And now we have to play around with textures. Remember to see, to show the eyebrow here, you see what I'm doing? I'm just adding a bit of a, you know, just a couple of lines there. Now, the, as long as you focus on the shapes, you won't get lost. And it's quite a simple process, really. It's much simpler than you think. And I, I made everything lighter. See, I'm, I'm kind of dividing it into black and white and making everything lighter. You see the shadows under the eye? Now look at this cool thing. We're gonna add some eyelashes because the eyelashes also cast a shadow and our brain will automatically know to read these as eyelashes. That's what's so cool about it. Now moving on with the left section, let's add a bit of uh, red. See, like so, just to spice it up. And I'm trying to put the red pretty purely, but even if it mixes a bit with the yellow, I'm fine with that. And you see it's always a play, and this should be rounder, by the way. And I should add a texture of an eyebrow to it, so a couple of hairs. And it's always a play of right, left, right, left, keeping the paint moving, keeping the paint going, okay? I'm gonna add a bit of that red here. And a bit of this here, very wet. I'm gonna add some water, just to keep this edge alive while I work on this side, okay? And here I'm gonna be a little careful, just to, because these are the eye sockets, you want to preserve the shape, you know, properly. And notice how little progress we've made, because we're working our way slowly, taking our time, working on the shapes, just getting them to look right. You can take your time. I see a lot of people make the mistake of just being in a hurry. Don't be. Really take your time, use a lot of water, use a lot of color use, you know, work transparently. I'm not gonna get this to be as dark as the reference photo, because I'm not aiming there. You see, it's not gonna be as dark for sure. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna charge this area with water as well, and we'll get to work on this section. I'm actually gonna use a bit of green. I'm gonna add a bit of this yellowy, beautiful sap green, a bit more, and we're just gonna work it in, but in a fairly light, fashion, okay, changed my mind a bit, because this area is fairly light, so we go light. Okay, and I'm gonna use water to move the little paint I have here, and this is what's gonna keep it light, and just follow the shape you see on the reference photo, okay? Even if you the drawing, the drawing is just there to, to be used as a hint, but what you actually have to do is pay attention to the reference as you paint it, okay? Give it the respect it deserves, and actually look at the shapes, look at the different elements. What do they look like? What do the shapes look like? And look how much time I have to just leave these edges here. Okay, so you don't have to be nervous while painting. You can take your time. Way more, way longer than people think. I'm gonna use another brush to just mix, blend, sorry, this edge a bit. See, when you use so much paint and water, blending an edge becomes really easy. So you just Blend it in, okay? And if you, oops, and if you moved it too much, you can just use a bit of toilet paper and dab it right out, okay? Now we get to the bottom of the nose, so let's put a shadow in here. What color did we still not use, I wonder? Let's use, I wanna use a bit of this um, warmer, uh, sorry, cooler red, okay? So like that. For the nose, just follow the shapes you see. And maybe, I don't know if this is interesting to some of you because we're really just following the shapes we see. So there's nothing too smart about it, but it's just so much fun. Take a reference like this, you know, with a, with a, a, a photo that's fairly black and white and easy to interpret. Make life easier for yourself. Notice I'm doing a bit of wet and wet here. I'm grabbing a lot of the pure pigment and just putting it in, you see, like that. But in any case, grab a reference that isn't too complex, that isn't too hard. I'm gonna add a bit of purple to it, get it darker, and just use this way of slowly building it up in an interesting manner. 
and I think you'll be surprised by how good the results are. Okay, now, here we come to an important area. Edges are among the things that I do think can really enhance, and notice how I do this with one long brush mark. Messed up the shape a bit. Let's try, let's see if we can correct this. Get rid of this, <laughs> and then try to just recreate this line with a bit more of a gap, and we're good. But in any case, um, edges are one of those things that can really enhance a watercolor, and notice how most of the edges here are hard. I did blend some here, but most of the edges are hard. So I'm gonna put extra care in blending this edge. See? Like this, that's the first go. Now I'm gonna add more water, and that's the second go. And you see with every iteration, it blends a bit more, okay? Like so, and now we have a beautiful blended edge. You can tilt it a bit to the right to help the water move and, and to move the pigment. Then, as we move down, I'm going to change to a bit of an ultramarine blue and maybe neutralize it a bit because we have a lot of vibrant colors here. So let's go for a more muted combination at the bottom. You don't have to. That's just my choice. You can go ahead and do this entire thing very vibrant uh, and enjoy yourself. That's the entire goal here. Okay? And then we're going to connect these shapes, and this is a bit of a tricky move, so pay close attention, I'm gonna work it fast. We're gonna connect all of the details within the lips to the right, okay? And we don't wanna lose this wetness, so what I'm actually gonna do, I can just bring in more water or I can just spray a bit. Spray a bit of water, helping the paint move, and now I can finish this shape at my own leisure, like this, connect it here. Connect very gently with water the lip to the right side. And I want to use water to not get too uh, harsh of an edge, okay? Now the right side of the lip is fairly light, so I'm going to get some watery mixtures, add them here, and then we're going to go and dip back into the dark and grab just about everything I have here. Let's use that up and get some beautiful grays and work our way around the bottom lip and this entire thing connects here. See? It all connects. I'm gonna darken it just a bit, like so. I'm gonna darken this just a bit and then I'm gonna add the mid value for the upper lip. I don't know if you notice, but it's pretty dark actually. So something like that, all the way up to here actually. Get the shapes accurately, it can really help, okay? I know we said a lot of emphasis on just the paint and the flow, but sometimes it is, you know, it's just gonna lead to a nicer result uh, if you're able to get the shape accurately, like I'm trying to fix it here. And remember, we have an area to blend here, this bottom section, so just adding a bit of water. And I don't care that this started drying, I'm fine with that. Now a bit of clean, clear water to blend this, and I think we're almost done. I do want to consider, you just look at the shape, look at the, the reference photo, and try and figure out, is it missing something, do I need to add something, or does it look good as a whole? Actually, to me, it looks good. The, the lower lip is a little darker, to be quite frank, so let's, let's try and go for that. Maybe it's a mistake, maybe it isn't, I don't know, but I'm gonna darken it up and add some highlights, you see? And I'm gonna avoid touching the rest of the lips for now, like, happened, like what happened here, because I don't want them to blend too much. But I think with that, it's actually a really good hint. So let me show it to you up close, you see? I think we got the face pretty in a pretty decent manner. And my color harmony is really off because I'm just using a bunch of random colors. You can make it better. You can um, use just three primary colors like this uh, more subtle red, this blue and a yellow and then mix everything out of those. Mix the green out of those, those instead of using a pre-mixture like I used here. Uh, but in any case, very beautiful result. Let me dry this and remove the tape for you. So this one's assigned fully dried. Now one trick for you, if you find that your paper really stays buckled when you remove the tape, 
it's really useful and helpful to leave it for a long time taped, okay? And if you don't wanna leave it for a long time, use a hair dryer to get it to flatten, okay? It will flatten. Now, I didn't leave it that long, so it may buckle, so sorry about that. Uh, and yeah, another tip I wanted to give you just to wrap this up is if you want to focus more on accuracy and uh, accuracy of details and shapes, work monochromatically or black and white. Remove the element of color so you don't have to worry about it and instead focus on working black and white and focusing on the shapes. You see, so we're playing with the different variables of the painting to uh, make the process easier on us. So if you want to improve one aspect, you can let go of the other. You see what I mean? So hopefully uh, that will help you a bit with uh, making life easier for yourself and enjoying your practice sessions because to be quite frank it's very hard to do this in a super accurate manner and to try and use tons of colors or maybe imitate the real colors you see in the reference photo so use black and white references work black and white to get the accuracy of the shapes and work colors just to enjoy it okay so I hope that makes sense now let's wrap it up face to face so this is it I hope you enjoyed this one and as I mentioned play around with the levels of difficulty to keep making this interesting and fun for you. If you want to focus more on accuracy and getting it to look photo uh, realistic, then drop the colors, just focus on value or focus on shapes. Maybe you want to focus on temperature. What would happen if we use warm colors in the center and then as we go out gradually, we use cooler and cooler colors. That could be a good uh, also uh, underpainting. You know, there are plenty of ways to utilize colors and values to create a beautiful, interesting result. And using these types of, um, of references, again, is a very good way of doing that because you don't have to think about so many things. The shapes are very clear. It's open for interpretation to some extent, or you can just go with it as you see it. Now, one last note I will include down below, I didn't mention, but you're gonna have obviously the, uh, the uh, reference photo and also the one with the grid and, and all of that, okay? I think I did mention it. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to check out my frustration-free watercolor course um, because that's dealing with this exact same topic. And I actually, in addition to the free course I'm working on making for you, I'm also working on a continuation course to the frustration-free watercolor course which is gonna be about values and colors. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this one too. So more updates, more things to come. I hope to keep you company as you're maybe quarantined at home or just, I don't know, bored or whatever you do. I am really grateful for you watching the videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you again in the next one real soon.